All right, howdy boyos. Welcome back to Steel Division 2. Today, we are going to take a look at the second guard tank core in Steel Division 2. We're going to take a look at it, and we're also going to make a deck at the same time. Starting, obviously, off with the recon. And um, Steel Division, actually, I haven't really discussed this, but Steel Division 2 has a couple of interesting features in the deck builder that we need to take a look at before I look at anything. So first up... At the infantry, let's just grab the uh, Gavardia. The Gavardia can come in in an M2 half track. It costs 20 points to call them in, in the battle in phase A for level 3. Now, if you want to call them in on a, um, let's say, half track with a 50 cal on it, their price just increased by 20. Or if you want to call them in in a Zis 5 truck, or in a Studebaker, even though that's misspelled, there is a lot of different options for you to bring your infantry. You're no longer either forced to bring them in on a truck that the game decides for you, or on foot. You can now say no transport or any sort of transport that the game has available to you. So you can make your decks more personalized when, you know, you can have assault infantry coming in heavier half tracks with weapons on it. Uh, for example, some of the German half-tracks have AT rifles on or even anti-aircraft guns. So you can use these supportive half-tracks to support your infantry push. However, if you're just using very cheap infantry, for example, the Germans also have uh, some battlefield police, some military police units. And if you want these to reach the area quick, you can just put them in a Kubelwagen or a very cheap Opel Blitz and get them to the front ASAP. Which is an interesting mechanic, and I have to say, it's a really, really cool one at that. Now, let's move over back to the recon, and let's grab the Razvetka T-34-76 recon tank as an example. Not only can you choose the transports for infantry, you can also choose when you want to deploy certain vehicles or units. So, for example, the Razvetka tank costs 55 points. In Phase A... We can get one tank, one card of one tank. However, if we switch it over to no veterancy, we can get three of them in phase A. And obviously, I'm assuming we can get two of them with one veterancy. Now, if we decide, you know what? Let's not use the Razvetka tank in phase A, but in phase B, the availability scales. In some units, it's by two. Other units, it's by point, uh, or 1.5. Uh, it depends on the unit. But the availability will scale to the point where you see you can get more level 1 veterancy tanks in phase C than you can get zero veterancy tanks in phase A. Obviously to the point where you can get nine zero veterancy Razvetka tanks in phase C. First up, the WADP, which is a motorbike with a DP machine gun. It's only 10 points. Uh, it's not going to uh, to be very well armed or armored, as you obviously can see, but it, it does serve the point of a recon unit. Then we have Dodzor. I'm assuming it's just a two-man recon team. Actually, let's set this just to uh, the earliest and the least experience. They can come in a half track, but like I said earlier, you can give them all sorts of different Vix here as well. So you have a Razvetka uh, transport. You can have, uh, there's a jeep in here, you know, it's it's speed with weapons, um, they're all going to obviously just be slightly different uh, here. This optics, actually this Razvetka transport actually has high optics, which means not only can you get a two-man recon team, you can also get a high optic armored car with a 50 cal if you wanted to bring it in for 35 points. But obviously, the difference here is, you know, you are spending, oh, you are spending 20 more points on a Vic with a machine gun on it. Then we have the BA-10 armored car, armed with a 37 millimeter gun. The motorized Razvetka. And Razvetka with a bazooka on there. Uh, and actually, you can get four of these squads. They are 40 points for just a squad, let alone getting another transport with them. However, having just fully automatic weapons... Well, granted, the SVT is an automatic weapon, but it's a semi-automatic weapon, obviously. Still going up against Car 98 is going to be interesting. And you do have that bazooka, 
And the cool thing here, because they're recon, you can kind of ha you'll, they're going to be at the front anyway. Nerdy's crossroads, awesome units to uh, ambush an early sort of German push on a main road. And then, like I mentioned earlier, the T thirty four seventy six Razvetka with high optics. It just is a it's just a more armored version of your recon. Personally, I'm not a great player when it comes to war game and Seal Division nineteen forty four. And I'm sure I won't be the best player in Steel Division 2, but I really like Armored Recon. I like Armored Recon in Wargame. I like it in Steel Division 1 or 1944. Um, and it is, it's a little bit less dodgy. You can kind of put it there and it will actually take shots at whatever is coming into its view. And it has a decent chance, if it's not a Tiger or a Panther coming really close, it has a decent chance of taking it out. So, moving on to the infantry. We have the Sapri with the PPSH. We have four PPSHs, a Capture Panzerfausts, and a TNT with a range of 120 meters. Tanko Desantniki, a full-on assault squad with PPSHs and spow grenades. Interesting, they are not a leader unit. They are just a, an actual assault squad, but they do not have any HE grenades. They're just pure smoke grenades throw them in front of them, rush into the village, and hope that a couple of them make it into the first house, and then they're going to be quite brutal to deal with, considering they have so much automatic firepower. Also, I'm not going to go through every single infantry unit, but these guys do come in also if you wanted to on a half track with the machine gun, but it does cost you 20 extra points. Then we have Afto Komroti, uh, commander unit, armed with PPSHs and smoke grenades, and the Gav... I'm assuming this means Gewehr, or uh, Rifle Komroti, uh, which have SVTs. Obviously, CQB versus uh, slightly longer range, with 500 meter range versus uh, only 120 meter range on the SMG. So there's a large difference there, obviously, depending on how you're going to play the specific game. Gavardia are your uh, sort of regular infantry unit. Uh, they have two PPSHs, a DP machine gun, Mosin Nagants all over the place and actually carry a couple of anti-tank grenades. The WLA Komroti is a commander motorbike. Uh, I don't really know if I would argue it's very heroic to be yelling commands from your motorbike, but if you are so inclined and you don't want to spend... Uh, you want to have a commander that is able to drive around the battlefield fast, unlike obviously the regular infantry when you compare the speeds of 18 kilometers versus 133 kilometers it makes sense if you want to have a faster commander unit to take the jeep commander then we have Machiki. the Machiki are uh, are scary these guys are a 10-man assault squad and they all carry ppshs unlike the Aftomato, or sorry unless the unlike the uh, tanko de zanki the Tanko de Zanki do not have anti-tank grenades. The Afto Machiki do have anti-tank grenades, but they don't carry smoke grenades. The Gavardia with the uh, DP, they carry an extra DP, and I believe if we compare them, they lost one PPSH. So you get more longer range firepower at 750 meters for the machine gun, um, but you do lose a little bit of CQB ability. Uh, if you were to go into a town, but in the end you also oh, I didn't realize that you also gain a PTRD anti-tank rifle meaning this uh, unit can actually deal with uh, Light armor at the same time as well with 20 rounds for the AT rifle Sapri with seven SVTs TNT a DP and two PPSHs These guys look pretty badass actually uh, and they also come in multiple transports, including one with a 50 cal machine gun. Sapri Komroti, standard, it's a uh, SMG, two riflemen, smoke grenade, Sapri commander, and he uh, obviously has uh, the commander buffs. And then we have Tanko Komroti, I'm not really sure what Tanko stands for, three PPSHs, has a smoke grenade, Maybe he's an armored commander, but uh, the picture, he could be anything. I'm trying to figure out. I mean, there's no real explanation there. I don't speak Russian. My apologies. Moving on to the tanks. And here's where it gets interesting. T-3476 Komroti. A commander tank for 45 points. 
I really think that when you look at the uh, the balance between the Russians and the Soviets, or the Soviets and the Germans here, is that the Germans have Tigers and Panthers. Well, the the Soviets so far in the game, they don't have we don't have other divisions yet, other other battle groups yet. So so far, the Soviets will have to make use of their planes, their tanks, and then on Moss or their artillery slash anti tank guns to deal with German tanks. I would not want to throw this tank up against a Tiger. It's just a T-3476 with the ability to talk on the radio there with the antenna. T-3476-1943. I gotta say, I really like the Panther tank, and I think it's a very sexy tank. But the more I look at T-34s, the more I have to say that I think they are also very sexy looking tanks. You can actually get quite a few of these. You can get eight of these in phase A, and you have two cards. If you really wanted to, you could spam out a 16 T-34-76-1943s 1943s right off the bat for 45 points. Moving on to the T-34-1942, the main difference between this and the 1943, so the 1942 has more armor value, but it has less speed because of the armor. That's the main difference, 10 point difference there. Then, T-34-85 Komrotu. This is a really sexy looking tank. It's just a T-34-85 Commander version. T-34-85-1943 comes in and uh, you can get a absolute buttload. Now, not necessarily in Phase A, but look at that. You can get 16 of them in Phase C. Now, if we just do this, you're looking at 64 T-34-85s. It doesn't matter how many tanks the Germans have, it doesn't matter how many Panzerfaust or Bazookas or uh, Panzerschrecks or uh, ME-410s with 30 mils they have. This is the Russian horde right here. The only thing missing is that you got guys running on the back screaming Ura. Uh, honestly, that's just ridiculous. And then an upgrade over the 1943 is the 1944, and the main upgrade is the fact that it is uh, able, capable to fire APCR shells, and also it has a couple of other things such as better accuracy, and um, it has the ability to then also do more penetration damage because of the APCR. Moving on to the support tab, we have the Ognemichiki. Assault engineers armed with a flamethrower, smoke grenades, and a PPSH. The smoke grenades to get in close, and then the SMG and the flamethrower will make short work of any infantry. I haven't seen how good or bad flamethrowers are in Civil Division 2. Civil Division 1944, I'm sure a lot of people got really annoyed with flamethrowers to the point where if I play with my friends, there was a rule of, um, against spamming flamethrowers because they were ridiculous. I'm interested to see how good they are going to be in Steel Division 2. The Maxim machine gun and the SG-43 machine gun are both now in the support tab and no longer are machine guns found in the infantry tab. Now the Maxim is a 7.62 machine gun, so is the SG-43. The main difference here is that the Maxim has a kilometer range and the SG-43 has a 1.2 kilometer range with a higher firepower and also has a little bit more strength so it can take one more uh, casualty before going down over the Maxim. But obviously, it comes at a cost of 5 extra points. And also, it has less bullets, though it has a higher fire rate, so it's going to run out of ammo quicker on both those sides. Then, the OB-25 76.2mm gun. It's an anti-infantry gun at a 2000 meter range. It does have access to heat shells, which should do a quite amount of damage to any vehicle that manages to get close enough for an accurate shot to be fired at it. Also, much like with infantry, you can decide, this is what I think is really awesome, you can decide what transport you want to bring with it. Do you want a 50 cal, or do you just want a Studebaker, or do you want a simple Jeep to be towing it, or, well, I don't know why you would do that, but you could even go for no transport at all if you were so inclined. Then we have Combat, which is the Commander. I haven't really understood exactly how Commanders work. I believe that there is one Commander per phase. We have Phase A, Phase C, and Phase B. And the Commanders are basically leaders that have a large aura linking to other Commanders on the battlefield, to other leaders. For example, 
uh, the T-34 Komoroti. If they are within range, they will add stars to the leaders, and the leaders will add more stars to... Or sorry, no, the commanders can add stars to leaders. Such a, in the way leaders can add stars to surrounding units. So it's basically a leader, but for the leader, as far as I've understood it in the game. My apologies if I'm wrong. We have the M2 combat here for phase C, and the M3A1 combat for phase B. Keep in mind, the Germans have this obviously as well. However, I believe that their combat leaders or their commanders are actually Panthers and Tigers in Phase B and C. Then, the Studebaker ammo truck obviously speaks for itself. Doesn't really have to be showcased that well, I assume. And then, the ISU-152. If you really want to fire a football-sized 152mm charge at somebody and really want them to fuck off, use this thing. You actually do get... Four AP shells, but with the accuracy of just 30%, you're about to maybe hit one if two of those. But if you do, I'm pretty sure you're going to fuck whatever you're shooting at up a lot. It's got a high pen and an insane amount of range. Two kilometer range will allow us to uh, go toe to toe with some of the heavier German vehicles. Just make sure you're the first one to fire. Though you do have a ton of armor. Um, this is nothing really when you compare to German penetration of, uh, I think the average German, the, uh, Panzergranat 39 goes like 170 or 167 millimeters of penetration, so this is not really going to do a lot for you. Obviously, HE-wise, look at the blast, a 3200 blast, high, suppre <clears throat> high suppression, um, you just need to make sure that you get close enough to your accuracy goes up. Uh, as you can see, actually, accuracy is lower than on the AP shells. Moving on to the anti-tank, we have the PTRS-41, which is the anti-tank rifle we saw earlier, this time just in a two-man team. Also, with a lot more rounds, thank God, not just 20, but 60 rounds, and a PPSH for close support. We also have a Panzerschreck team, which speaks for itself. They captured one of their German Panzerschrecks and are capable of deploying it against their former owners. Coming in, I would personally prefer it in probably in uh, on a jeep or on a bike just to get there really 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 fast moving on we have the 53k 45 millimeter anti-tank gun speaks for itself we have a apcr shells and ap shells 2000 meter range this 2 2000 meter range with ap shells the difference in penetration is only 20 millimeters over the accuracy is 10 percent more the suppression is more so it might give um it might give vehicle crews a little bit more uh, something to be scared of, but no APCR shells at this time. Let's actually take a look at the APCR shells, how much damage they do. Oh, the APR, APCR shells are actually the 100 millimeter penetration ones. Okay, so the regular AP shell only fired 95 mil of penetration. Then the ZIS 376, which is not only capable of direct fire as an AT gun, this is also capable of shooting at a arc, making it an artillery gun capable of hitting targets further away. I believe we're going to see 2,000 meter range on the AP, 2,000 on the APCR. The HE does not say the range. I'm assuming it's going to be a couple of kilometers range. It doesn't say it in here, uh, but it does have a large blast on the HE of 76 mil point two, um, and a high rate of fire of, uh, ooh, actually, yeah, so this is nine rounds per minute. That's a lot, and then the HE has an 8 round per minute rate. Last but not least in the anti-tank tab is the SU-85. Very, very dangerous tank, and probably one of the more dangerous things in the Soviet arsenal currently in the game against German Tigers and Panthers with an insane 180mm penetration. It's a glass cannon with no armor of itself to speak of. Keep it hidden, keep it ambushed. When it sees something, hopefully it shoots it within the first two shots. Because if return fire on this, it's not going to be good for this tank. The anti-air tab. The ZIS-5 Dushka is a Dushka machine on the back of a ZIS-5 truck. Looks absolutely badass. If that wasn't badass enough for you, how about we just have four Maxim machine guns set up next to each other to create the gas AAA Maxim 4M. People who've played Men of War, Rob's Mod, will know how much of a bitch this is to do with infantry-wise. I can see this being a pretty decent infantry killer at 1500 meter range. Accuracy doesn't matter because you have a pretty decent high rate of fire and you can definitely stop an infantry charge with this thing. 
the Zen Art 37 millimeter gun. An anti-aircraft gun that does actually have AP rounds available to it. I'm trying to figure out if it does have that available to it, actually. There's no penetration mentioned, but I can only assume this has some sort of AP available to it. It is very expensive. Anti-air in this game is very, very expensive, but also very, very effective. Normandy 44, initially, when I first played the game, planes were pretty overpowered, as in they were so hard to destroy. In this game, I've seen entire waves of planes get destroyed by one or two good-placed anti-aircraft guns. You really cannot just spam planes at a point. You have to find out if there's AA, kill it with artillery or infantry or tanks. Sending in planes is not going to work. Last one, ladies and gentlemen, the air type is the ZSU M17. It's a quad max and on the back of a half track. It's got 1500 meter range, a decent accuracy, an insane fire rate. And I think this is what I saw shooting down planes left, right, and center. Also, against infantry, it's going to be quite effective, I can only assume. Moving on to the artillery tab, where you would expect Russia or the Soviet Union to shine. The artillerist unit. As far as I have understood this, you put this guy somewhere in the front lines. Artillery behind, way behind these guys, has more accurate shots at areas within a certain range of the artillerist unit. So basically, put these guys forward, hold fire, and then enemy units within their range, between quotation marks, between in these guys' range, should be more easily hit by artillery, as far as I understood it. Then we have the Zvot Uper. No clue what it means, no clue what it stands for. This guy is an, art an artillery leader. He has a ton of Mosin infantry with him uh, and a PPSH for himself. This is more of a rear guard unit at the same time as this being a very cheap and easy leader at long range, but I don't not really see the point of this guy at the moment. Then we have the M37 grenade launcher. It's the standard 82 millimeter mortar found obviously again can come in a ton of different transportation units this one is interesting though the pm37 on the back of a fucking motorbike if you really want to yoink on someone and i know cardi hates when i say yoink uh, i'm so sorry she's not watching this video but you are i'm sorry that now i did it to you i guess doesn't have a lot of ammo only has 20 he or tw 10 smoke shells but it has a high rate of fire and it can obviously easily move itself around. So you put it in a place, fire a couple of rounds, get the hell out of dodge with a very short range. It's still going to be interesting to see how good or how bad this unit actually does. It's going to be very good at suppressing infantry with that high RPM though. Then, I believe I once read a, uh, a Soviet quote from World War II. One in every two German soldiers on the Eastern Front has an Iron Cross. One in every two Soviet soldiers on the Eastern Front has artillery behind him. If you really don't like the guy you're looking at, use the 120mm mortar. Something that the Russians or Soviets were very big fans of. 6,000 meter range, still a pretty damn high rate of fire at 14. Not a lot of ammo again. 20 rounds HE, 10 rounds smoke. You're going to need to resupply your mortars a lot. Then we have the F-22 76.2mm divisional gun. Comes with AP shells for up close, HE shells for far away, and it does have 105mm penetration if this thing somehow needs to deal with a tank. At 2,000 meters, 30% accuracy, not the worst. Just wouldn't use this thing as an anti-tank anti -tank gun unless absolutely needed. The BM-1316 Katusha doesn't really need an introduction. 16 rockets in two sets of eight, 4,200 meter range, and a very high suppression and blast statistic. I don't think this initially kills a lot, although in the game I played it did kill one of my grills by yeeting a rocket right in the top of the, uh, the crew compartment because it's an open top tank, the grill. But... These things sound amazing in the game, they look amazing, and they're just so iconic of Eastern Front Warfare. Absolutely brutal. Now, moving on to the SU-76, which uses the same gun as the anti-tank ZIS-3 we saw earlier, which has both the capabilities of firing direct at tanks or indirectly at uh, infantry or vehicles in a distance as an HE artillery unit. 
Doesn't have a range mentioned. I can only assume it's not that far. The AP is 2,000 uh, meter range, which isn't actually that bad for 105 millimeters of pen at 40 accuracy. It's actually a pretty damn good anti-tank unit, even though it's in the artillery tab. Interesting. And then last but not least, we have the Ford GPA, which is an artillery officer who comes in with 122 millimeter barrages. And you can get obviously multiple of these the higher you go into the phases. So you can get three of them in phase C and one of them in phase A. Let's keep air for one second. Let's take a look at the defense thing. It's going to be very easy to take a look at for you guys. So in the breakthrough game mode, you actually get to deploy defenses if you are a defender. You have barbed wire, which slows infantry down. Gun pits, which allow you to put certain uh, guns, like anti-tank guns, artillery in them for more protection. Trenches to protect infantry. These actually look pretty damn cool. And bunkers, both Maxims for the Soviets and MG42s for the Germans to try and protect the front line. And now, last but not least, and I love the air tab in the Soviet army here, the U-2 LNB. I believe this looks a lot like a PO-2, but I don't want to say it's a PO-2, but it reminds me a lot of the PO-2 that the Night Witches uh, flew during, the, uh, during World War II. It's a recon plane, but it's a recon plane with a twist. It has four tiny baby bombs to really piss off whatever the fuck you just spotted. You just drop four bombs on it, just a he 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 on them and then you leave tiny little recon plane very very slow i'm surprised it doesn't fall out of the sky at 110 kilometers an hour there's vehicles on the ground that can outrun this thing if you really don't want to get bombed you just hope that the roads are straight up but uh yeah very interesting little unit then we have the yak 1b normandy armed with a javac cannon and a barazin machine gun um I gotta say, I'm not really sure how effective these yaks were in a one-on-one -on -one fight with a fuck wolf, um, but it's what you got. It's what you gotta deal with, and uh, it is a pretty sexy plane. Looks very, very, very good. The Yak Nine Normandy, an upgrade over the Yak One B. You actually get a ton more of these as well. You get three cards of these versus only one card of the Yak One B. Uh, the main difference here is the speed in the Yak-9 is a, a little bit higher. And I'm trying to see any sort of statistic difference here, but I can't really see anyone. So the big difference here, I'm assuming, is that you can call in three of them in Phase A at two-star veterancy, which is insane. That's, that's a very good deal. That's a very good deal. And then the Yak-9, you can call in... Uh, well, if you wanted to, you can call a 9 in Phase C without any uh, veterans the other, which is crazy. Then, honestly, one of the favorite things that the Soviets have in the arsenal when it comes to planes, the IL-2s and their many derivatives. Here, the IL-2M with bombs. 12 bombs, actually. Only, they are tiny, but it doesn't really matter considering this is not the plane that I was looking for. I was looking for this one, which we'll get to in a second. Then... The Yak-9T Normandy, very famous amongst people who play War Thunder, I'm sure. Uh, armed with a 37mm cannon. Not really sure how effective it is going to be against tanks and, and, and light vehicles. Because I haven't tested it yet. Can only assume it just rips apart enemy planes. Now here's where, it's good, where it gets interesting. The IL-2M with rockets. It has a ton of rockets on board. It has the... Iva cannons, which are very, very deadly and are going to be very damn good against enemy vehicles. And then has some machine guns to obviously defend itself against enemy planes. Very, very nice looking plane indeed. Very interesting to see how good the cannons are going to be against ground targets when obviously the L2 can strafe them from above on their weaker parts of the armor. The PE-283 here armed with a couple of hundred kilogram bombs you can still get six of them in phase c if you don't want them to have any veterancy also armed with a couple of machine guns for defense for both forward facing and uh, rear facing but when it comes to that in this game i'm pretty sure that there's no chance they're going to be able to defend themselves and they're just going to absolutely die and then last but not least an upgrade over the previous pe2 the near this pe2 carries two 500 kilogram bombs if you really want whatever is below you to absolutely die. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to make the deck 
and I'll come back and very quickly take a look at the deck with you in this video. And in a future video, we'll take a look at the German deck currently in the game. And as promised, a look at my current deck that I built. Like I said, I haven't really tested this at all, but I figured this was at least a, a pretty decent balance deck from my uh, point of view. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will definitely be playing some more Silla Vision uh, and not just looking at these pretty units in the garage. But for now, hope you guys enjoyed. Fancy awesome. Cheers.